Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. I'm Jason. I'm Kid. And we are the Yahoo and the Tor YouTube channel. And it is a preparation day. Yay! Alright, there's only two drummers. Uh, which means tomorrow's a Shabbat. Yay! Alright, <clears throat> so here we are. Um, friends, family, everybody out there, we really appreciate you all. We love you all. Thank you very, very, very much for being a part of our little entourage here out in the middle of a jungle. And we are... Your family, you guys are our family, and we hope that you guys are the kingdom family. And the kingdom family are the people who believe that the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator are still good today, tomorrow, and forever. And the, the kingdom family are the people that are in love with the ways of our creator. They're in love with our creator. They're in love with his son. They're in love with everything about us, about him. And there's... The, the reasons to love him are numerous. It's just, it just, it's uncountable. Every breath that you take in is a reason to love our creator who has given you life, who has blessed you, who's brought you with life. Enough of a, a, a time that he has spent designing you, designing everything about you. Every freckle is counted. Every hair is counted. Every, every armpit hair is counted. He knows everything. Got toe hairs? He knows how many toe hairs you have. He knows everything about you. This is our creator, and our creator is an ingenious designer who has designed an incredible ecosystem. He's, he's given us a big flat plane with a big dome over the top of us, and he has given us the sun and the moon and the stars to tell times and to tell seasons and to to just give us everything that we need. There's nothing that we don't need. He has given us a way back home. He has given us a, a path to our creator. That path to our creator is found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. It is also found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And those nine books, between those nine books, you're going to be able to find the kingdom road. You're going to be able to find out exactly what it is that you're looking for. And it is a good path. It is. There's nothing wrong with keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. I know all these people out there are like, ah, oh, this isn't hip. This isn't cool. This isn't, uh, oh, those, those things are old and dead. That's for the old people. Guys, they're good for all of us, for every generation, for just, it's it's an amazing walk, and it is an amazing time of life that, that we can be walking the kingdom road, and it gives us a, a reason to live. It gives us all a reason to live. So many people don't have a reason to live. They don't, they just don't care. They just dwell from one day to the next, but there is a reason to live, and that is to glorify and to obey our creator and to give back to him. Uh, just a fraction of what he gave to us. And that's called loyalty, right? If we are unloyal to our creator, then we're going to say that the laws, statutes, and commandments don't apply to us. We're going to nail them on the cross. We're going to say they're thrown away. We're not going to observe them. We don't care, right? And that, that's what unloyal people do. And so we are trying to be those people who are loyal. Gentlemen, how you guys doing? We yeah. got Eli here now. Eli, you were a little sleepy. Sleepy, sleepy. You with us? Yep. You got your pillow? You made it out? <laughs> All right, fine. Any jokes? Anyone have any jokes? <clears throat> Guys, come on. I got nothing. Really nothing? Nobody has anything. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something real quick. Atheism, <clears throat> gentlemen, atheism, it's a nonprofit organization. Now, let that one sink in for just a second. I... Now, as that one's sinking in, I'm going to tell you a little story about the future, the past, and the present. All of them went into a room. They looked at each other in the eyes. That's when things got tense. Come on, you want to <laughs> take a while to get that one? I got it. Oh, come on, man. That was, that was good. Say, hey, if you guys don't get any jokes, you're going to have to end up with these little little uh, corny jokes. That's pretty good, though, right? <laughs> Future, past, present, walk into a... The other, the other version of it is like the guys walking to a bar. We don't walk into bars around here. We walk into bars to give out scriptures. We walked into a bar, we hand you guys the scriptures. There's a better life than this bar. Just leave. All right. Jaden, tell me about what happened yesterday. Um, actually, before that, guys, this is, let me let me spin this real quick. It's not even a spin. Um, <clears throat> I believe this is the greatest English translation of scriptures you'll ever possibly find. It is not, it has been, there's been so much love, so much time, so much compassion, so much hope <clears throat> brought into this. It is available right now. And not only are you buying the greatest English translation of scriptures that has ever been produced, you are, you are helping get scriptures in for prisoners. That is the biggest thing that we are doing. The only entire reason that we are doing a book version of this is because we could not find people that we trusted to give this manuscript to. We never went into this to actually put a book out. We were always given free PDFs. Everything we had was free. There were so many requests and so many people wanted a book. There was just nobody that we would trust 
after seeing what the Hallelujah Scriptures did with their corruption and their evilness and that they the, the evil they did when they ended up with this, we couldn't allow this to be out there. And so this is what we did is 100% of all profits go into the prisoners, 100%. Nobody's paid and there's nothing, there's no, there's no storage fees, there's no website fees. We cover everything ourselves internally, everything that comes in there. Um, it goes to the prisoners. And so in, if you do not want or if you cannot afford a scriptures, that is a not a problem at all. This is revision five. This is the same revision that we are reading out of. This is Josh's scriptures, single column. The same revision that went to the book is right here in this PDF. So they're all available right here on the downloads. We get hundreds and hundreds of downloads a month. Guys, this is a very, very popular download. It's not going to do you any good just downloading this, right? Unless you p open this up and you look at this and you read this. This is not... It doesn't matter that it is the greatest English translation ever. It matters that if you it you could take any translation and you could find our you could find the Kingdom Road. You could find our Creator. Most people won't, but this is a very good translation because all the pagan names and titles are gone. Uh, the name of our Creator and His Son have been restored in Paleo Hebrew, and it is an amazing, amazing version of it. And this is it right here. This is what you're seeing right here. All right. And so before you recap this, let's let's talk about the last chat, last verse of the last one. They just, the Gideon and his, his crew, right? They captured two princes, Midian, Oreb, and Zeb, and slew Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb, while they pursued Midian, and they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon beyond the Ardim. Now, catch us up with what happened prior to that point, Jade. Um, Gideon, Yahoo, Yahoo, Gideon told him that he wanted him to go for the people who wanted him to go lead the people into battle, and uh, Gideon was uh, scared. He didn't know what to do. He, he asked for signs. He had asking for different signs of things, what to do. And he told them, uh, he goes, uh, we can make a fleece uh, dry, but all the grass damp around it. And then uh, he, uh, he did that. And the next day he goes, okay, one more thing. Make sure you really are, yeah. Make sure the, uh, the fleece uh, is wet and the grass is dry. And um, he did that and then he did it. And then he went and made the army smaller. He kept getting people, but yeah, he kept, making the, he kept testing them and making the army smaller because he wanted them to show how great his power was, and I didn't think, want them to think they were the ones freeing themselves. They did that. They uh, got ram's horns, they got uh, jars and torches. They broke all the jars and blew the torches that are outside the camp, and they all started going crazy and uh, fighting inside there. And they uh, and they started chasing down the kings and the princes and got them. And that's the princess. Okay. All right. Thank you very, very much for that. Um, <clears throat> anyone have anything else to add to this, John? No. Gentlemen and dogs. Okay, here we go. And the men of Ephraim said to him, What is this you have done to us by not calling us when you went to fight with Midian? And they contended with him sharply. And he said to them, What have I done as compared with you? Are the gleanings of Ephraim not better than the grape harvest of Abiezer? Anyone have any idea? Why are they, why are they attacking Gideon? Uh, maybe because they're not getting credit for killing. They want to go to war too. Maybe they uh, were under oppression and uh, they want, didn't get free themselves, so they're like upset. Maybe they feel like they are uh, useless. Why did Yah take it from 30,000 to 10,000 to 300? Uh, because if there was that many... Was then, it 30,000 or 3,000? There was a lot. I don't know. It started with 10,000, didn't it? Was it 10,000 or 30,000? I thought it was 30,000, then it was like less. Or was it... What is, is my numbers all messed up? Come on, gentlemen. Your Wait. synapses are still working well, right? Hello? Anyone? Uh, no, not really. Oh, man. Three slaps. <laughs> okay. Now, um, let's talk about this. Though. Um, so, because Yah said that he didn't want them to become uh, arrogant and think that they were freeing themselves because uh, that many people, it would be uh, easy to take So, he still wanted less people so that they didn't so they didn't think they could do it themselves. So, this is the effect right here of the less people, right? right? The people are mad, right? They, they didn't get the, uh, number one, they didn't, probably didn't get the, uh, the booty, right? They did not get the bounty that came in from their attacks. On this whole thing, and um, they didn't get the uh, uh, what is it the no the the notoriety right the, the the just like whoa this guy's a warrior okay three Elohim has given into your hands the princes of Midian Oreb and Zeb and what what was I to do as compared with you and when he had said that their rage toward him subsided and Gideon and 300, <clears throat> 300 men who were with him came to the Yardim passing over weary yet pursuing. And he said to the men of Sukkot, Please give loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are weary, and I am pursuing Zeba and Zalma, sovereigns of Midian. Now, do we know anything about the, the people of Sukkot? I mean, these are Yah's people, right? I mean, these yeah, aren't I, foreigners, I, right? I don't 
No, talks about them much. I'm pretty sure it's we went over in Joshua. I don't remember which. I, I think it's the people of Yah. I think these are these are people who are supposed to be Yah's people. I don't know which tribe this was exactly. I'm sure we can figure this out. But six. But the leaders of Sukkot said, "Are the hands of Zeba and Zalman Zalmuna now in your hand that we should give bread to your army?" And Gideon said, "Because of this, when Yahuwah has given Zeba and Zalma into my hand, I shall tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars." Exclamation point on the briars. Now, we all live out in the jungles, and is there things out here that will tear your flesh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. dude, I just tore my flesh yesterday just trying to, like, uh, move a move part of our dog swimming pool, right? I just reached down in the grass, and there's these little itty-bitty tiny briars. There's, there's spikes everywhere. You will die out here from these spikes. If you do, if you attempt to do things out here without gloves on, you are a, you're a psychopath. Yeah, you, you don't want to be doing that. Um, the briars are, are wild. We can, I suppose we can blame, you know, Adam for this, but, um, continuing on eight. And he went up from there to Pinuel and spoke to them in the same way. And the men of Pinuel answered him as, as the men of Sukkot had answered him. Man, they just want bread, man. They're staying there. They're staying there for oppression. And man, these people won't even give them bread. Isn't that an interesting situation, right? You, you have, you have 300 dudes. It would not, it's not a huge army. You could definitely feed 300 dudes out of a village. Without a problem. I mean, the first the first little batch that we couldn't figure out. we got to figure this out. Was it 30,000? Look it up, Eli. Where's your phone? Oh, phone Come on, just stretch out. Go get your phone. Go get something. I'll and then, go look. Yeah, go look while he's doing that. Eli, you need to read with us, buddy. You need to have your Bible out here and read. Cade, you too. You should be part of this family. There's only two of us out here that are reading this thing. Yeah, so we're getting some family time here. Um, is it? We're, we're trying to find this. It was 30,000. <laughs> I think it was 30. Any guesses? Or waiting? I think it was 10,000. All right, hold on. We'll find it. Jay, do you find it? Uh, okay, uh, I think it's 22,000. I think it started at 30,000. I thought it started at 30,000. 30, All right, there's silence. Yeah, there's dead silence. Jay's just sitting there. I, I started looking over at Mr. Cole, chewing on something over there, and we just we just went dead silence. Yeah, we're, just we're killing us today, guys. Hang with us. Maybe you can whistle a tune as we're sitting there. I think it started it. at 22,000, and then 10,000 remained. All right, hold on. Here we go. So what is it, Jade? Uh, 20, it started 22,000. All right. So anyway. And it goes down to 10,000. That was radio silence. We could, could, we broke the art of radio silence. All right. So let's continue on. Um, where are we at? Nine. So he also spoke to the men of Pinuel saying, when I come back in peace, I shall break down this tower. And Zeva and Zalma were at Karkor and their armies with them. About 15,000 men, all who were left of all the army of the people of the east. Now those who had fallen were 120,000 men who drew up the sword. And Gideon went up by the way of those who dwell in tents of the east of Nova and Yagbeha. And he smote the camp while the camp was at ease. And Zevoa and Zalma fled and he pursued them and captured the two sovereigns of Midian, Zeva and Zalman, and shuttered the entire army. And Gideon, son of Yoash, returned from battle from the ascent of Keris. And captured a youth of the men of Sukkot and questioned him. And he wrote down for him the leaders of Sukkot and his elders, 77 men. And he came to the men of Sukkot and said, See, Zeva and Zalma, about whom you taunted me, saying, Are the hands of Zeva and Zalma now in your hand, that we should give bread to your men who are weary? And he took the elders of the city and thorns of the wilderness and briars. And with them he taught the men of Sukkot a lesson. And he broke down the tower of Penuel and slew the men of the city. And he said to Zeva and Zalmunna, how were the men whom you killed at Tevor? So they answered, they were like you. Each one looked like a son of a sovereign. And he said, they were my brothers, the sons of my mother. As Yahuwah lives, if you had let them live, I would not slay you. Now, who's, who is he talking about here? What, is, what exactly are we? So I think we missed something. I didn't say that because uh, they, I think they went through the area here and they went killed the whole Sorry. field, but they were actually his brothers. Um, yeah, and Zeba. Yeah, so Zebo was the enemy. So it's like the enemy. Um, I want to kill the people that went through that. I think this was over like days and weeks. Or something. Yeah, but as far as Zebo goes, um, about whom you taunted me. Yeah, those were the bad dudes, right? Those were the guys they were hunting, right? Zeb, Zeba and Zalma. Zalma. Yeah. And then he says, so he they answered, they were like you. Each one looked like the son of a sovereign. And so I think he was talking to them. And he said, they were my brothers, the sons of my mother, as Yahuwah lives. If you had let them live, I would not slay you. And he said to Yether, his firstborn, rise, slay them. 
but the youth would not draw his sword for he was afraid because he was still a youth. So these are the, these are the dudes he was chasing, right? This is the very end of the time. And he's talking to this guy and he's saying, and, you know, he asked him, what do those people you slayed look like? And they're like, they look like you, the sons of the sovereign. And he's he like, said they were his brothers. I think they're actually his brothers. Yeah, they're brothers or like they're all, I mean, they're supposed to be part of Israel. Everybody's supposed to be brothers and sisters. Okay. So he wants the kid to write. How old, how old do you guys think this kid was? Anyone? Mm, I don't know. Probably, pro probably younger than a teenager, I think. Younger than a teenager? I'd they, say 10 to 15. Because they considered like uh, adulthood around like 15, so I'm thinking like uh, younger than that. Now, I know that two of the three of you, if I told somebody, if we were in battle, if I told you guys to go slay the guy, that I know that you guys would do this. What do you think? I mean, what do you? Th this kid is going to be uh, put on the spot. Right? There's going to be all of these people yeah, here. Why did Gideon want his kid to go kill this dude? Uh, I think empowering, showing him power that, that, that they were in power. Probably. You know, it would, it would bring out, uh, you know, everybody would see that the kid was willing to do this. It would have been something different. But the kid didn't want to do this. Is that, is that bad for the kid? Um, no, not. I mean, do it, looks, do it, it, do looks, it. it looks bad in Gideon's eyes, probably. Yeah, Gideon probably took the kid home and was probably not very happy with him that he did this. Uh, but at the same time, um, there is a huge event that's about to pop off here. 20. Uh, actually, 21. And Ze Zebok and Zalma said, Rise yourself and fall on us. For as a man is, so is his might. So Gideon arose and slew Zeba and Zalma and took the crescent ornaments which were on their camel's necks. Okay, so what do you think that Gideon thought about when... Um, those guys were taunting him about his kid and telling him, you do it yourself. Uh, it's probably, probably a little bit embarrassing because his kid didn't obey him in front of that. Right. And, like, it was time to, like, do his job. These guys are getting the mercy at this point. They should probably be a little more respectful. What do you guys make about the uh, crescent ornaments that were on the camel's necks? I don't, I don't these know. These guys all blinged up? Like yeah, some yeah, road, these, road yeah. hogs or something? Yeah, what's going on with camels? I don't know. Every enemy has always had, like, crazy things. Like, the Egyptians had, like, some crazy... Design they blinged out. Stuff. They blinged out their camels. I guess so. And they gave the camels like jewelry. Give them earrings. <laughs> they pop some earrings in those things and put some bling on the big gold chain. Okay, let's continue on. Um, Twenty-two. So the men of Yisrael said to Gideon, "Rule over us, both you and your son, and your son's sons, for you have saved us from the hand of Midian." But Gideon said to them, "I do not rule over you, nor does my son rule over you. Yahuwah rules over you." And Gideon said to them, "I have a request to make of you: that each of you give me the ring from his spoil." For they had rings of gold because they were Yishmaelites. All right, so why do you think that Yishmaelites had rings of gold? Because they're traders, maybe? Maybe, maybe that's just like part of their cultures. They each had a gold ring. Maybe. Like Mr. T had on like massive rings and chains around their camel's necks. I, maybe. I pity the camel. I pity. I pity the guys. <laughs> All right, uh, let's continue on. Where are we at? Twenty. Uh. Five. Five. And they said, we shall certainly give them. And they spread out a garment, and each man threw into it the ring from his spoil. And the weight of the gold rings that he requested was 1,700 pieces of gold, beside the crescent ornaments and the pennants and the purple robes, which were on the sovereigns of Midian, and besides the chains that were around their camel's necks. All right, there's more chains around the camel's necks. So we had a crescent thing, and we had a we had. These camels are all blinged out, Yeah, what's right? going on? Why do the camels have so much it, stuff? They, they don't leave home without getting blinged up, yo. Let's get our camels ready to roll. Like the all the heavy items off. <laughs> yeah, put some shoes on the camels, sign the shoes, put yeah. some bling on Maybe it they could have escaped better if the camels didn't have like this. I don't know. You know, it's it's very strange. But, I mean, they, they basically had their camels all decored out. Um, now, what do you guys, before you, you guys probably remember this, but what do you guys make of Gideon wanting all these rings? And that's a boatload of gold. I mean, in one little chunk of gold. I mean, we're talking rings of gold. Yeah, we're talking like millions of, of dollars of gold in today's value. Millions. Uh, something like this. Well, any thoughts? Any, does anyone remember the story? Uh, a little bit. Okay, so anyone who doesn't remember the story. Okay, so if anybody who doesn't remember the story, why would you think that he was asking everybody to put rings on a, on a thing? What's your guess? Well, if I did, if I would say that oh, you, I, so each of the guys had a ring. Well, this guy, he makes an idol. Huh? I think you make sense. Well, yeah, you you that's uh, you blew it. You're, you're doing it. Well, you asked why. Well, I was wondering if you didn't know. Well, I knew. Well, I asked you if you didn't know. <laughs> All right. Well, here we are. <sighs> um, it's a Friday. I'm glad Shabbat's up on this way. There, where are we at, everyone? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Thanks, Eli. It is so good of you to follow along. Thank you, my friend. Okay. And Gideon made it into a shoulder garment and put it up in his city, Opera. And all Yisrael went whoring after it, and it became a snare to Gideon and to his house. So he made a shoulder garment out of all this? And they then went and worshipped it. Was they worshipped the shoulder garment? It wasn't even supposed to be an idol. 
Yeah, why? What's what's up with the golden shoulder? I mean, I don't think he'd be able to hold this thing. I mean, if it was a real gold, gold it's like super heavy. Yeah, he'd be put on maybe like the core. It would be one heck of like a members from the battle or something. Like some football pads on or something. Yeah, gold. Yeah, it's strange. All right, twenty. Thus Midian was humbled before the children of Israel, and they lifted their heads no more. And the land had rest for forty years in the days of Gideon. Uh, forty years is these forty year spans. Yep. It, Yerubabel, son of Yoash, went and dwelt in his own house. Well, let's go back to this forty years thing. Let's talk about this because what happens when I'm gone? What are you guys gonna do, right? Is it a forty year span? All your little uh, you're gonna have a whole bunch of little pagan or a bunch of heathen kids uh -oh. <laughs> sitting there worship with their with their. Uh, they're Christmas trees, and you guys are going to go, well, I, I wonder why we have this Christmas tree. No, nope. I mean, it took 40 years to make this happen. This is your generation. I mean, essentially, uh, you guys should make it another 40 years. I'll be long gone in that span. But um, what's going to happen? Are you guys, you guys going to do the same thing? Look at these people. No. What are you guys going to do? Seriously. We're going to keep reading Torah and know the Torah. I mean, for, how, when are you going to start teaching your kids Torah? Uh, from the time that they're born. From the time yeah, they can read, right? From the time they can even read, from the time they can listen, from the time they can hear. I mean, it's three years old. I mean, this is... Eli, are you are you going to become a little heathen? You have little heathen kids? Little pagans? Oh. And get on your... You know, create a Nashroth pole or something when you're... when you, I'm dead? Nope. Oh. Seems like 40 years is all we have before everyone forgets this. Let's not forget that it's 40 years that these guys keep messing up. Because, um... Eli, where am I at, buddy? You're on, uh... 29. Oh, uh, so... Or, yeah, tw no, 28. Oh, well, I was going to say, it's really good to have you carrying on. No, you are on 29. Oh, so I'll continue on. It's good to have you watching with me here, buddy. Okay, 29. And Yerubabel, son of Yoash, went and dwelt in his own house. And Gideon had 70 sons that were his own offspring, for he had many wives. Uh, Gideon's... All right, man. Gideon's... Uh, wow. 70 they sons. Put Abraham to shame. Yeah, put... Well, I don't know. Abraham had a bunch of kids, right? All right. Abraham, oh, yeah, okay. Um, and his concubine, who was in Shechem, also bore him a son, and he gave him the name Ablamach. All right, so there's a dude named Ablamach too, which is it's the son of Gideon. And Gideon and Gideon, son of Yoash, died at a good old age and was buried in the tomb of Yoash's father in Ophrah for the Ab Abiezerites. And it came to be when Gideon was dead that the children of Israel again went whoring after the Baals and made Baal Bareth their mighty one. Whoever that is. Thus the children of Israel did not remember Yahuwah their Elohim, who had delivered them from the hand of all their enemies round about. Nor did they show kindness to the house of Yerubal, Yer Yerubal, Gideon, according to all the good which he did for the Israelites, so for Yisrael. 40 years and have gone back into about... And they, these guys aren't living like hundreds and hundreds of years at this point. This is the same kind of stuff we do, which is why I, I wonder what you guys are going to do when you guys have... Little kids, are you gonna like let them rage up little pagans, little heathens? Or are you gonna like yeah, raise them up and, and under the hands of Yah? <laughs> Miss Nicole's just smirking, laughing as we're going by. Yeah, it's a Friday, guys. We're all we're all probably tired here. Our apologies for anyone we've offended today. We try not to offend anybody. And if we have, I'm super sorry. Um, much love to all of you guys. We hope that you guys we hope to meet you guys someday in the kingdom to come. It's gonna be a hoot, right? It, it will be a hoot if we make it. And that's the thing, if we make it. And the only way that we know that we will. Make it is by the laws, statutes, and commandments. Obey them. Revelation 14, 12 says that. The people who are saved are the people who are obeying all of the statutes, all the laws, all the commandments. And they have the faith of Messiah Yahushua. And for those who do not know, that is Jesus the Christ. There were no J's in Hebrew. The man's name was never Jesus. And so there we go, everyone. We hope you guys have a wonderful day. We hope you guys have a wonderful Shabbat. We hope that tomorrow you're keeping Shabbat. Sunset today is when it begins. Much love to everybody. All right. Shalom.